on a recent program, we talked about an extra letter in the name of Jacob, spelled with a vav, for one time in the book of Leviticus and four more times by the prophet Jeremiah. And we posed the question, did Moses and Jeremiah misspell his name? Did some ancient scribe make a mistake? Or did God put the letter there for a purpose? Contemplating upon this vav in the letter Jacob, we went back to the name of Abraham and realized that God had placed a special hey, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, in the name of Abraham. It comes from Genesis chapter 17. We're going to discuss this unusual hey on today's Prophecy in the News. Gary Stearman mm -hmm. is here. And Gary, we've got some interesting things here that yeah. have been said about this heavenly hey. As a matter of fact, JR, we're going to be talking about Hebrew spelling today. Those of you watching, don't worry. This is going to be very, very simple. We're talking about the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter He. Uh, the letter He, uh, which you see on your screen, has a numerical value of five. Mm -hmm. And it has a metaphysical or metaphorical or a symbolic, if you will, meaning. And that meaning is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. And it, it is usually uh, used uh, in Jewish interpretation to intend uh, some aspect of the creation or the work of God in creation. And we would just say the work of the Holy Spirit, J.R. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 4, God says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, or Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And then he goes on to give the hay to Sarah as well. Uh, Gary, according to this verse, mm -hmm. he is made a father of many nations mm -hmm. through this addition of the hay right. to his name. And the hay representing the covenant of Abraham, which was a covenant of grace. And knowing from the days of the New Testament, mm -hmm. that is the covenant for many nations or all nations. As a matter of fact, we find in Genesis 17 that this is an incredible uh, statement to the world. Genesis 17 is a statement not just to Jews, uh, not just to those who would be born uh, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but to all nations, and by the way, including the children of Ishmael, the 12 sons of Ishmael, and all of the princes that would come out of Ishmael. Yes, who are blessed later in this chapter. Later in this chapter, they also are specifically given a blessing. And so what we've got operating here is grace. And it's typified by the letter hey, which has a value of five, which we in traditional Christian circles call the number of grace. Now Abraham here, being the father of many nations, represents what we consider to be the spiritual father because of the covenant of grace. And uh, here I am, a Gentile, being saved by grace, this covenant through Calvary. It took the death of the testator to make this covenant effective, but the covenant was originally given to Abraham. And Abram was given this hay as a sign of the covenant. Mm -hmm. The hay then, uh, Gary, goes back uh, to the early pages of Genesis and has a profound meaning to it. Let's talk yeah, about it really does. the days of the <clears throat> earth being created. First of all, and before we go back to, to the earlier passage in Genesis, I just want to say that, that Genesis 17 here validates the study of the Hebrew alphabet perfectly because yes. it says very clearly that God understands the Hebrew alphabet. Else, why else would he have added a hey to Abram and said, on this occasion, when I confirm this covenant in a particular way, I'm going to add a hey to your name. The hey has a meaning. And to Sarah as well. Exactly. Sarah's name was changed from Sarai to Sarah, or Sarah as we call her, by the addition of the letter hey. In both cases, they had a hey added to their name. Uh -huh. And essentially, you could just say grace was added to their names, but it's a lot deeper than that. Yes. Now, when we get to Moses and the Mosaic Covenant, that covenant was made with one people, the Jews, the chosen people, the offspring of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. <laughs> and there's a whole other story Ooh, there. Indeed. But uh, this hey of Abraham is a covenant 
wherein Abraham becomes the spiritual father, the progenitor of many nations. And today we're called Christians. No matter what nation we come from, mm -hmm. we're born on this planet earth. We can be born into the family of God through the use of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who is represented by this hay. And Paul uh, spends much time in his epistles explaining just how we are the spiritual seed of Abraham through Christ. J.R., there's a fascinating sentence <clears throat> in Genesis 2-4. Uh, and basically it says, I'll read it in the King James uh, so that we will be familiar with the language. Uh, Genesis 2-4 says, These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. And I'll just stop right there. This is after the seventh, or during the seventh day. Yes. And, uh, and there's a hay there. There's a hay there. It's fascinating. These are the gener generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. And the word in Hebrew, when they were created, is bahikavod. Bahikavod. Uh, Bahikaam, I beg your pardon. And what happens here is the little H sound you hear in that word, he, uh -huh. has the letter he in that word, when they were created. Now, um, it's kind of fascinating that that little he is written in the text and with a very tiny letter. Every Hebrew text you pick up, you'll see that the letter he in that sentence is written with a teensy weensy little letter. It's not the same size as the other letters. Not the in same the size as the other size uh, as the other letters, and fascinating. And this has been true for literally thousands of years, as far back as anyone can tell. This hay is just put in there as a real small letter mm -hmm. in between two regular size letters, mm -hmm. rather than being the regular size hay. It's dropped in as a very small hay. I guess what for mm -hmm. emphasis. It emphasizes something, and the question is, what does it emphasize? And I'm, I'm reading here from a Jewish commentary uh, that this small hay, and I'm quoting, indicates the passivity of nature and the omnipotence of the Almighty. Uh -huh. uh, the, the diminution or the smallness of the hay uh, here speaks of the tiny creation next to the hugeness of God, and it stands forever as a mark of of creation. So that hay represents creation. It represents creation. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. When in Genesis chapter 1 it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. The beginning of the creation, it was the Holy Spirit of God who was doing the work of the creation. And so when the creation is pictured here, it's pictured as a little bitty hay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that represents every planet and every star and every galaxy in the entire universe and you compare the entire universe to God, it's just a little bitty half-sized hay. Basically that's what it says. Now, Made by the Spirit of God. That little word, and I was reading from a very dim facsimile of the Torah a minute ago and I slightly mispronounced the word. The word, when they were created, that has the little tiny hay, is supposed to be pronounced, and listen carefully, Bahi Bar'am. Bahibraam. You notice how close that is to Abraham? Abraham. As a matter of fact, the rabbis teach that if you just rearrange the letters of this word in the day that they were created, mm -hmm. you come up with the word Abraham. Which basically means the same thing it, as is there, right? Exactly. And, and this would not be true if God had not added the hay to Abraham's name. Mm -hmm. That is, if it had remained Abra Abram without the hay, uh, then it couldn't be rearranged to reflect the creation. But when God added the hay to Abraham, Abram's name, making it Abraham, mm -hmm. then it became possible to use the very same letters as mm -hmm. when they were created. Now this sentence in Genesis chapter 2 refers to creation before the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, the word toledot uh, is the word for generations. generations. It, it is written with two vavs. When, Abraham, when uh, Adam falls, uh, the word toledot uh, is written with only one vav, as if one of the vavs is missing. And uh, this represents the broken, um, the brokenness, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the fact that uh, God and man are separated. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and are not brought back together until the last chapter of the book of Ruth when we have the generations of David, uh, the ten generations listed there. And uh, at that point, because of the Messiah, the Messianic line, the Toledot is, uh, is restored. restored. And J.R., it's fascinating that the, the hay, that is the creative principle of the Holy Spirit here, mm -hmm. is what's being illustrated with this new spelling of Abraham's name. This mysterious hay added to the name of Abram and Sarai. There are two of them. Gary, it's interesting to me that in the name of Yahweh, uh -huh. which is called Jehovah in King James English, there are two Hays. Yod, uh -huh. Hay, <coughs> Vav, Hay. Yes. And according to the rabbis, the first Hay is on a higher level than the second Hay. Uh -huh. The Godhead. And, and that was the Hay given to Abram. Uh -huh. And then the last Hay was the Hay given to Sarah. Yes, all of which sounds tremendously arcane and mystical, but it's really not. It's, it's just simple beautiful. simple Hebrew. It's simple Hebrew. Uh, it's kind of fascinating. We should take a little side trip at this point and say that in Hebrew, the word hey has a meaning all its own. If you just take that exclamation, hey, in Hebrew, it means behold or see or look. In English, in the King James, it's translated either Behold or lo. For example, in uh, Genesis 47, 23, Joseph is rescuing his people. <clears throat> then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, hey, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, hey, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. We've got two hays there. <laughs> Just like the, the two hays in Yahweh. Yeah. And, and the hay... Uh, means either lo or behold in English, or see or look, but it also means behold God's grace, which I think is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing grace. In fact, grace. We, we, get, we get our, um, yeah, amazing grace. We get our, uh, from the English, when we say, hey, uh, that comes from the Hebrew. It comes, uh, it, uh, it traces back to Hebrew roots. It really does. Uh -huh. Hey, meaning look, or attention, or see, mm -hmm. yeah. And Abram has this hay attached to his name, which means for you and me that we, the offspring of the Abrahamic covenant, that is we who have been adopted into the family of God, born of the Holy Spirit, have received that hay, being, that being the Holy Spirit, and uh, this gives us then citizenship in heaven. Now, when before the fall of Adam, God said, these are the generations without sin of the heaven and the earth in mm -hmm. the day that they were created yes. with that little hay representing hay. creation. Mm -hmm. This says that when he gave the hay, I mean, this says to me that when he gave the hay to Abraham, and Sarah to produce Isaac, then Gary, God promises to restore creation. He, this is the Fallen whole creation. idea. It's in the hay, the promise to, to make it like it was before the fall, to restore it. Mm -hmm. And Abraham and Sarah, to, to whom have been, had this, uh, this hay has been attached, I should say, then are the progenitors of this promise promise of grace. Sarai, it, without the hay, she was, she was called Sarai or Sarai, mm -hmm. and that means my princess, as in it's a possessive meaning Abraham's princess. But when her name was changed to Sarah, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I'll read that in Genesis 17, 15, God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, that is, my princess, but Sarah shall her name be. In other words, a hay was added, and when that happened, her name was elevated now to, a, to a, a higher level. She was no longer just Abraham's princess. She was the progenitor of grace for the whole of womankind, I guess you could say. Wow. Hmm. Now, Moses wrote five books. He wrote <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Hey. I'm getting goosebumps, Gary. <laughs> He begins in chapter 2 of his first book with a little bitty hay. He concludes the fifth book with this great big hay written in the Masoretic text of the Hebrew. 
That's right. Not a normal hay, <clears throat> but a great big hay. I mean, you can see it if you can read Hebrew. If you pick up a Hebrew Bible, don't have to be even in interlinear. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you can that's find this oversized hay. The juice this is the this is the ultimate conclusion of what was started with creation. Go ahead. With creation, the Jews uh, teach that just as this, the diminished hay in Genesis 2:4 mm -hmm. is symbolic of the tininess of all creation before the hand of God, so the concluding hay, <clears throat> which is written very very large in, in uh, Deuteronomy 32:6, stands for God stepping out of the heavens and acting in a very special way at the end of days. Wow. <laughs> and we have the counterbalancing, little yes. hay and the big hay. And it is found in Deuteronomy chapter 32. This is the song of Moses. Remember Revelation 15 when we stand on the sea of glass in heaven and the angels come out with seven vials of wrath to pour out upon the earth, which they do in chapter 16. In this 15th chapter of Revelation, it says, we will take up harps and sing the song of Moses. Well, listen to the song of Moses, verse 6 of Deuteronomy 32. Do ye thus requite the Lord? And in that, that sentence begins with an oversized, jumbo-sized, giant hay. Yeah, it's a double-sized hay, and it says... It says, Ha la Yahweh. Ha la Yahweh. That is, do you thus requite the Lord? It's an, sort of an accusatory. It's God saying at the end of days, Okay, stand back. You've had your chance and you have failed many, many times. Now, we don't know what to make of this being in the sixth verse, but in programs past, we have brought up the idea or the subject that this happens to be the 5,759th verse of the Bible. And we have talked about these verses representing years in the mm -hmm. latter days. And if we are on uh, target with, now we didn't make this up, this is, this is not what we say, but the rabbis um, a few years ago, uh, came across chapter 30 and uh, verse 5 um, of Deuteronomy, which is the 5,708th verse, which says, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it. That 5708 is the Hebrew calendar date for 1948 when Israel was brought back into the land. <clears throat> and so we surmise that each verse thereafter representing a year coming down to the sixth verse of chapter 32 would be 1999. Do you thus requite the Lord? That's the verse that would stand for the year 1999. The meaning, <clears throat> this is a, a picture of God acting out now. In other words, he's, he has allowed man to act for many, many generations. But this is God in action. Wow. Could this, could this begin in the coming year and God stepping out of the heavens in this giant hay? This, now this hay represents the Holy Spirit. And you may recall that Joel said in that day, in the last days, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And the first one occurred 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. But we are awaiting the pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the last days, um, the latter rain as opposed to the early rain 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago. Could this giant hay here in verse 6 represent that pouring out of the Spirit mm -hmm. of God? J.R., it, it very well could. And I, I take us back to Genesis 17 as we uh, draw to a close here. Uh, when Abraham was 99 years old, he and his wife received the hay. Also, he received... 99. <laughs> he was 99. Oops. <laughs> Got and here we have in verse 6, 1999, yeah. and we've got this giant hay. Now, Gary, is that a coincidence? Uh, well, you know, we can talk about that later when we've got a lot of time, but I, there are no coincidences in the Bible. But what happened here, this was the fifth appearance of God to Abraham. Abraham uh, received seven visitations from God. This was the fifth one. That's the letter Hey. And on this fifth visitation, uh, he was promised a people. 
Verse 6, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. That's the whole world, not just the Jews, the Gentiles. All recipients of grace, all symbolized by the hey, five, grace. And Abraham was born how many years after Adam was created? It seemed like it was 1948, wasn't it? Very close. Amazing. Well, there's a lot here and a lot to be learned in the Bible.